Hello! Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and we're doing transposition. Now I've already done an intro to transposition video, so if you're not sure what transposition is, sometimes it's called rearranging equations. Go and watch that video first and I'll explain what it is and why we do it. You also need to know how to solve equations. Transposition, at the end of the day, is solving equations. It's just that a lot of the numbers have been replaced by letters. You're not really doing anything different from what you would do when you solve an equation. It just looks very different and that can put people off sometimes. But make sure you're confident solving equations before you come onto this. Now we're going to be following exactly the same method that I did in the solving equations videos. So just quickly to remind you what that method is. Step one when solving equations is always to remove fractions. Step two is to remove brackets. Step three is move added and subtracted terms. And then finally we always divide by the number next to the letter. Now I split the solving equations videos into four to follow those four steps. So we started with the easy ones where you're just doing the last step and then we had steps three and four together and then we did brackets as well as steps three and four and then we did all four steps together with the fractions. I'm going to do the same thing for transposition. So in this first video I'm just going to transpose equations that involve the last step then we'll gradually make it harder over the next few videos until we can do the whole lot at once. All right. So as I say, in this video, the step we care about is divide by the number next to the letter. Now let, rem let me remind you how you do that for a normal equation first, and then we'll come on to the transposition. So I'll perhaps put that over here because I'm going to refer back to it a few times. So if we have 2x equals 6, so in theory we would check the four steps here. Fractions, no fractions. Brackets, no brackets. Added or subtracted terms, no added or subtracted terms. So the only thing we have to do is the final step, which is divide by the number next to the letter. The number next to the letter is 2, so we divide both sides by 2. We do a little divide by 2 on both sides. The reason we do that is because these 2's will cancel, which will leave you with the x by itself. And 6 divided by 2 is obviously 3. So that was easy, that's how you solve equations where you're only using the last step, you're only dividing by the number next to the letter, in this case 2. Alright, let me give you an equivalent example for transposition. So if we have a y equals x and imagine in the question it tells you that you want to get the y by itself. Now I'm going to put that over here in a circle so I don't forget. Often the question will say transpose and then it gives you the equation for and then it gives you a letter. Yeah, so it might say transpose a y equals x for y and that means you want to get the y by itself. The y is the letter we care about. You want to put everything else on the other side and leave the y by itself on one side of the equation. So going back to this, that's the equivalent of getting the x by itself. When we solve equations, we're always trying to get the letter by itself on one side with everything else on the other side because if all the numbers on the other side, you can work out what that number is and you've solved your equation. We did the same thing here, but because we've got all letters here, there are no numbers, we need to know which letter is the important letter, the letter we want to get by itself. Now I say there are no numbers here, actually they're all numbers. Remember that everything in algebra is a number. Yeah? Every letter you see just represents an unknown number. But as I explained in the intro video, sometimes we want to rearrange these equations before we put the numbers in. So the important thing to note at the start is which letter do you want to get by itself? That's the letter we care about. So when we come on to our final step, well let's quickly check through the other steps first. Fractions, no fractions. Brackets, no brackets. Added or subtracted terms, nope. So the last thing is we divide by the number next to the letter. Now which is the letter? There are three letters. It's that one. It's the letter we care about. They'll always tell you what that is in the question. So we divide by the number next to the y. We have the number next to the letter, number next to the y. And the number next to the y is a. Remember that a is a number. So we're going to divide everything by a. Just like here, when we had 2x equals 6, we divided everything by 2, because that was the number next to the letter. Over here, because we care about the y, we're going to divide by the number next to it. We're going to divide by the a. So on both sides, you divide by a. So divide by a, divide by a, just like we did here. The reason we do that is because the a's here will cancel, and it'll leave you with the y by itself, just like the 2's cancelled and left you with the x by itself. 
and then here you've got x divided by a. Now if we knew what those numbers were, if we had 6 and 2 for example, we could work out what it gives you. In this case it gives you 3. But we don't yet know what the numbers are. Remember we're going to be repeating our experiments and putting different numbers in here each time. So we don't worry about what that's going to give us. We know that it's going to be x divided by a, and that's all we care about. We'll put the numbers in later. We've managed to get the y by itself though, that's what matters, that's what they've asked, to do is, asked us to do in the question, so you stop there. That will be our answer. If you rearrange the original equation, ay equals x, you get y equals x over a. So actually, although it looks very strange, it's easier than solving equations, because you never actually have to work anything out. If you're dividing, you just write it as a fraction. You don't have to work out what 6 divided by 2 is because you're going to put the numbers in at a later date. Right, let me do another one. Once you've seen a couple of these, you should get the hang of it. So imagine the question says, transpose P equals QR for R. So they're telling you they want you to get the R by itself and everything else on the other side. So there are no fractions, no brackets, no added or subtracted terms, so the only step we need to worry about is divide by the number next to the letter. Which letter do we care about? It's R. So we're going to divide by the number next to the R. And looking at this, the number next to the R is the Q. Remember that Q is a number. Everything here is a number. So we're going to divide both sides by Q. Just like we do here. Yeah, we were dividing by 2 because that was the number next to the letter. Here, though, we're going to divide by Q because that's the number next to the letter we care about. So divide by Q, divide by Q, those Q's will cancel, which will leave you with the R by itself. And there's nothing else to do here. We don't need to work it out. You just write P divided by Q, and that's your answer. Some people like to put the letter that we're trying to get by itself on the left. So some people might flip it round at the end, and that's fine. You can do that if you want to. So it would be R equals P divided by Q like that. Either way around is fine. Remember the equal sign means that the things on either side are the same. It doesn't mean, and the answer is. So either way around is fine. Okay. Now this can get slightly more difficult when you've got other things involved. Although, actually it's not any more difficult. You do exactly the same thing. It just looks a bit different. So next one we'll have C, X equals A plus 2. Partly I'm including this to show that you can have numbers as well. Sometimes you get equations that do involve numbers as well as letters. So, imagine the question says that we want the x by itself. I always put this here in a little circle so that I don't forget. When there's a lot of letters swimming around, it's very easy to forget which letter we care about, which letter we're trying to get by itself. So if you put it here in a little circle, you'll never forget, ah, that's the one I need by itself. All right, so fractions, no. Uh, brackets, no. Added and subtracted terms. Well, yes, technically we've got an added term here, but our letters are all on one side, and all the added and subtracted terms are on the other side, so we don't need to worry about that. The last step, we divide by the number next to the letter. That's the letter we care about. The number next to this letter is the C. So we're going to divide everything by C. So the thing that confuses people is often this, but it's honestly very easy to deal with. You divide by C on the left, and then you divide by, and in algebra when you write divide by, you just do a big fraction. You divide by C on the right. That's how you do it. These C's will cancel, which leaves you with the X by itself. And then you can't work out what this is. You don't know what A and C are. So you can't do any kind of simplifying or working out. Don't mess with it. Just write it down exactly as it is. So it's going to be A plus 2 over C. One big fraction, and that's your answer. The x, the number you care about, is by itself. Everything else is on the other side, so you've rearranged the equation. Now this can feel pointless. It can feel like, what are we doing? We're just moving the letters around. As I say, go and watch the transposition intro video if you haven't done yet, and that'll explain why this is so useful. In practice, this is really useful. But if you, if you don't know why, you just have to sort of take my word for it, unless you, as I say, watch the intro video. That'll explain why we do this. But that's it. For the last step, it really is that simple. You divide by the number next to the letter. Usually that just gives you a big fraction. And you just write out the answer like that. 
So go and watch Transposition 2 to know how to deal with added and subtracted terms when they get involved. Um, but that's all you really need to know for this one. My name is Jonathan Hicks and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Thank you.